have a keynote address by Mr. J. Satyanarayana, retired IAS, former Secretary, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Maiti, and the Chairman, DPI Academy. Can we welcome Mr. J. Satyanarayana with a big round of applause, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and it's really a privilege to be speaking to you. Though it's a very uphill task I'm trying to do at the end of the day, and a very, you know, esoteric topic like DPA and DPG, which is just upcoming at this point of time. So let me breeze through some ideas on this and uh, See, the, the conference, of course, is about digital transformation, but we are witnessing a kind of a sea change in the digital transformation landscape with the concepts of DPG and DPA. There is no widespread understanding of these two concepts, so let me demystimize some of them and just show you a, a kind of a reference architecture of a DPA. Next, please. So, as I mentioned, you know, there is no conference, including this one, which goes without these uh, two words, either DPA or DPG or both. And then, globally also, it's not that it's a trend in India, but globally, all major organizations are also engaged in this. And UNDP went to the extent of saying, creating last year, a program called 15 5 meaning 50 countries to be covered by at least one DPA in that country, solidly, countrywide. So they're working on it, and that started 23, so it will end in 28 is their target. And they have selected 10 sectors, which I will show later, agriculture, healthcare, etc., in which these DPAs, depending on the country's choice. So there is a lot of increasing import, importance given to DPIs, and it's an opportunity, area of opportunity for all of us, you know, in whichever, you know, line we are. Yeah, next one, please. So what is the definition of DPI? Well, DPG, there is a broad understanding of a DPG, but DPI still, there are 20 definitions if you just Google for it or do any due diligence. So we created, what is that we, I will tell you later, but we as a group uh, worked on this and created this kind of a thing that it is a set of digital capabilities and impact should be at scale, means at the national scale. Keep Aadhaar and UPI in your mind when you are reading this definition, it will be easy for us to understand in India. And also the whole ecosystem to be built. like. UPI is embedded into so many applications, electricity or any, you know, department that builds automatically attaches payment through UPI. Likewise, Aadhaar also, several applications embed Aadhaar and, uh, you know, leverage that ecosystem. So the whole ecosystem gets built there. And finally, we have heard uh, Manish speak in the previous uh, session uh, very briefly, though, about the kind of security and especially privacy that he emphasized. So how do you create the safeguards within the DPA? By design, it is safe and secure and pr privacy protected. So this, this is the kind of a understanding of a DPA. And I'll give more of detail here, which is that what, what is meant by digital capabilities? And what is the impact at scale? And similarly, what is the enabling ecosystem, what is an ecosystem that this DPA will empower? And also what are the safeguards? So I will not go into line by line detail, but it captures the most essential requirements and attributes of a DPA. Best example, known example is the Aadhaar and UPA in India. And I had the privilege of being the chairman of Aadhaar, as you know, uh, for three years at a very critical time. Yeah. Next one. 
So a few simple things for demystification, I have put it. Most, some of you or most of you might know these things, which is that in DPA itself, there are two kinds of foundational DPI, which means it cuts across all sectors and it can be used anywhere and everywhere, which is like, you know, four types are recognized, like digital identity, Aadhaar, digital payments, we have UPI. In other countries, I'm quoting Aadhaar and UPI because all of us know it, but several countries have equivalents of Aadhaar and equivalents of UPI by now. And then data exchange, how do you see that just like you send exchange emails from A to B effortlessly through an SMTP protocol, how do you exchange data so effortlessly but at the same time protecting the privacy and security? So that is the data exchange business is another DPI. So once the velocity of exchange of data increases, obviously the innovative services that can be given through that will increase uh, as well. Lastly, geospatial data is also one kind of DPI. This is, you can use these things in any application, right? They are needed everywhere and anywhere. Yeah. Next one, please. So, last two questions are about, okay, you have foundational DPI, but the counterpart, automatically the question will be, what is other than foundational? Which means, foundational is across all sectors, so, Sectoral DPI is only for a sector like healthcare, education, and uh, so on, which are the UNDP itself, after some research, identified these 10 sectors as needing the, you know, maximum uh, transactions happen here. So, and maximum value for the investment will come. So, it's not that any country has DPIs in all these areas. Still, work is in progress in some of these sectors, and no country has reached anywhere near doing TPI in these 10 sectors. And also, this other word is with which people just generally confuse or mix them, use them interchangeably, which is DPG. So DPI is a bigger concept. It is a, a mix of, a mixed bag of so many things, whereas DPG has a specific, uh, you know, item. As mentioned here, it's an open source software. Everything is open about DPG. And the goal of a DPG is a pushing something towards a SDG goal, sustainable development goal. It should have a relationship with sustainable development goal. Either it is healthcare and or those 17 sets of SDGs that UN had uh, announced. So that is the so it's a component within a overall DPI, you know, based architecture. Yeah, it's a smaller concept than DPI. The next one. So this table, actually, I don't want to go into detail again, but you can review it later once the, you know, conf organizers will send you here. But here I, I tried to put the differences between foundational DPI and a normal DPI and a DPG, which I have been explaining in, in the earlier slides. This is all, you know. So as the fundamental thing is that the foundational DPI is sector agnostic, whereas others are sector specific or use case specific. Yeah. yeah, next one, please. So this is a kind of a, a reference architecture, a seven layer architecture, which we have designed, uh, you know, for the DPI. There is no work done on this space yet globally, but this is uh, our own contribution to this thought process which is that at the bottom you have the physical infrastructure like networks and data centers, information security. A set of enablers without which the DPA cannot stand to legal or technical scrutiny. So there are policies, principles, protocols, and standards. Like if you know Aadhaar, there's an Aadhaar Act. For uh, you know UPA, there is the RBA regulation which controls them and so on. So that is the second layer. Then the foundational DPA, which I have four types, which I explained before. And this case is cut out for health. So DPA health is that fourth layer. Fifth is and sixth are DPGs, which look at specific use cases related to. This one is for customized for healthcare. You can do similar things for agriculture, for railways, or for transportation in general, or whatever it is. But 
the kind of requirement of a dpi uh, based ecosystem you know is like this and at the end of the day you know the the stakeholders will get the digital services yeah so you can review this also at a later point of time and the last slide which i am i said we 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 who is that we so apart from the world economic forum uh, being chief advisor there uh, i am also chairman of this upcoming institute so incidentally the launch it is being launched on 19th of this month just in another 3 or 4 days so it is dedicated to dpi creating more knowledge more capacity and more community building around dpi globally not confined to india alone but we have the entire developing world in our you know radar so it will be started on 19th june hopefully with the help of the industry it will be multi stakeholder initiative we will partner with several of you as the days pass by and hopefully it will be you know making an impact and make a difference to this world you know so i just wanted to share a few ideas about dpi and dpg thank you